hello family and welcome back to my channel the new wife thank you so much for joining me today i greatly appreciate your love and support um if this is your first time please make sure you like share and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my uploads coming up as y'all can see i've been enjoying fun in the sun with these tan lines um but i hope this video finds you well and if you have not please make sure you follow me on instagram and on facebook Facebook under Dior Smith and on Facebook the new wife all underscore which if you are currently following me then you know today's title is letter to my grandma so um, I'm basically just going to share really quickly um, my journey thus far so, my grandmother passed away in 2007 Ida Williams um, like, it's low-key really hard to say say her name without, like, chuckling because she was hilarious. Um, very strong. Ooh, very family-oriented. Um, meaning that she would hurt somebody over her family. She would check anybody. But she would love you all in the same minute. And she was very good about trying to force the best out of you. Um, so I'm going to do this in parts. The first part is going to be just when you learn to acknowledge um, when there are certain uh, times throughout the year that you may miss this person more or it may be some sort of imbalance emotionally for you. So <clears throat> she passed away, like I said, July 4th. She was very big on holidays. So Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, all of those things. Like Christmases at my grandma's house were the best. Like literally, there's a Christmas tree in my living room right now that I won't take down because that's one of the things that reminds me of my grandmother. So my Christmas tree is up all year round. Um, my Christmas tree has not leveled up to hers yet though. Like no, that hasn't happened yet. But in her birthday's in April. So I'm saying all of these things to you so that you can in your own life maybe assess when those particular dates if you will, are for you. Because with those dates, one, it makes you aware of when they're coming. It then allows you to make to let your, your spouse or the people you stay with, or your close friends, whatever the case may be, aware because they are going to come in those times when you may be frustrated, when you, may, when you may be more quiet than normal or don't really feel like doing anything or you, you really do want to do something. Um, so because I'm aware of those times, I'm able to let my husband know. And, um, when things happen with me, so like this year, July 4th was amazing. I had a ball. It was awesome. Like I had so much fun. We went to my sister's house. We grew, we grew, you know what I mean? We got in the pool. We was in the pool for like three hours. And then I went to my mentor's house and she had like a, a dessert bar and like fireworks on a lake it was beautiful I had a great day awesome day and I actually even sat up that morning and prayed and talked out loud for a good while that morning so I was fine now the next day July 5th no good I was no good I could just feel all of the needing to cry or needing to release like I could just feel it you know and I still needed to work that day and all of those things and I felt like as soon as I said it, it was going to just, like, I just felt like I was going to crumble. And I woke up, I woke up frustrated and irritated. So I went and I spent some time with God. And I know there's a scripture that says, for the spirit of heaviness put on the garment of praise. And that's what I began to do. And I did feel better. I won't say that I felt the greatest, but I did feel better. But I knew that I had to let my husband know how I was feeling in that moment because I could feel how frustrated I was. And I did not want to take it out on him, nor did I want to take it out on my bonus baby. And because I couldn't get the words out, I just simply text like, hey, I know what I'm feeling. Because I did say, I was like, you know, I was like, I feel, I feel off today. And um, I wound up just texting him. I said, hey, I know why I feel off. I said, I'm really missing my grandma today. I said, I, I'm trying to say it, but I, I'm trying like not to cry. So he just came back in the room walked over to me and he hugged me and I was able to re release those tears that just needed to come out in that moment um so I'm saying all of this to you because one it helps you to be more in tune with you more in tune with your own feelings 
and to know that it's okay to honor that person and remember that person and do something to commemorate them, whether it's a cookout or who knows, maybe I can start doing Christmas in, you know, Christmas in July. You know what I'm saying? Because that Christmas holiday was, I mean, she just loved Christmas. Like I can literally still smell the house, okay? When you walk in the door, like, mm, it's sweet potato, it's sweet potato uh, high in here. Oh, just, I can just smell the fried chicken and the collard greens and the mac and cheese. She will always do her stuffed fish, which the kids were not allowed to cut. We had to get an adult to cut you a piece. <laughs> But just those things so i'm saying all those things to you i hope that helps you in some way shape or form to maybe sit down and recognize what those dates are for you one to acknowledge them for yourself and then to make those around you aware as well so here is and i didn't want to write it i really just wanted to say it from my heart so this is my open letter to my grandmother ah <sighs> grandma Ida. Oh my gosh, my sunshine, my cheerleader. I can see you now still. When I was running track one time in high school, <laughs> I was running the third league and I just remember running and all I could hear, all I could hear, I couldn't see you. All I could hear was, go Didi, go, go Didi, go, go Didi, go. And I will never forget it. You are unforgettable. I miss you so much, so often. Um, I know that there are moments in my life that I've definitely missed you in, like my wedding, finding my wedding dress, when my husband proposed to me, when I graduated college, um, when I decided to start my own business. Um, and I've missed you in the tough moments too. Like when I had my miscarriage, um, life things, <laughs> ooh, life things, but I'm grateful. Um, I do really wish you were still here, but I don't necessarily know if I could handle you having to leave again. Um, I wish you'd been able to meet my husband. He's super dope. Um, I know you would have tried to, you know, <laughs> read him if you will. <laughs> um, I wish you were here to get us in check. And I don't necessarily mean my husband, myself, not saying we want me help because we nobody's perfect. But I just really wish you were here to kind of get some things together with our family because we've all, because we've learned to be so strong from you, we've never really honored our pain or really mourned you. So everybody's still in their, these corners, you know, like kind of fighting to be right opposed to all coming together and just figuring out one honoring our feelings honoring your memory and then figuring out how to move on from there without blaming any particular person we definitely all still love each other um well i know you know richard's with you now and uncle stan is with you now and i do, i will say that richard passing away really did get some of the cousins a bit closer. We talk a little bit more often than we did before. Do some more check-ins. You will be very proud of um, your children and your grandchildren. Of course, you know you never always agree with all of our decisions, which you will always make known. <laughs> you will always make that known, but your love was immeasurable. It was definitely replaceable irreplaceable excuse me and i've been toying back and forth with the, the idea and i think i'm going to stick with it that um when we get pregnant whenever that is going to be not rushing it right now father um but i do want to if it is a girl to have her middle name to be ida so i thank you for always allowing me to be myself helping me to see the beauty in myself when i was searching for it even though I had a great, have a great father. Um, thank you for loving anybody. Even if they were, you know, what people would say, step this or step that. Everybody was yours. Everybody was your grandchild. Everybody was your child. And you did whatever you could to help in any way, shape, or form. And one thing I've learned from you is to be a giver. 
to the best of my ability to be there for people, but to always stand your ground and not to be a footstool and to always love God and to love each other. So that is my letter to you, Grandma Ida. I love you forever and always, your sunshine. Hope this helped y'all. Peace. The new wife. See y'all next time.